Okay, so, oops, this has gone a slightly askew. So there you go. This video follows on from the video on risk, and now we're going to start talking about relative risk. Now, relative risk is a tricky one, and it can cause us some problems. And there will be another video following on from this talking about relative risk versus absolute risk, which could get tricky. So, this is some data that probably is not true. Uh, it came from the University of Auckland, and I think it may be fictitious. Who cares? It's about whether people attending courses with regular attendance pass or fail. And we know from looking at our own data at school that attending school regularly is a much better indicator for passing than not. So the risk of failure from last time was the probability of failing out of everyone, which is 44 out of 146, which probably is a fairly small number. Okay? The risk of failure with regular attendance is 17 out of 100 because I can get that from there. The risk of failure with non-regular attendance is going to be 27 out of 46. Now the relative risk is the risk from one side divided by the risk of the opposite. So in this case, the relative risk for non-attendance as opposed regular attendance is going to be the probability of non-attendance and failure divided by the probability of regular attendance and failure. So that's going to be 27 out of 46 divided by 17 out of 100, which works out at about 0.35 to 1 dp. So I can say non regular attendance makes failure three and a half times more likely. Now, I haven't talked about the increase in likelihood of failure. That's a different calculation, and some of you will know that that would be two and a half times, because I've got to take the 100% of the original off for that case. And I haven't talked about the absolute risk, which means I've got to look at, you know, how many more percent of people failed by looking at that, okay? Which is a different calculation again. So you have to read the question really carefully, but relative risk, we've done it.